Hey everyone, Ben the Bar Guy back with another video to help you make better drinks and today we're gonna go over what it's like to research the history of a cocktail. And it stems from the how to make a French 75 cocktail that when I posted got some comments from friends of mine but came out and said, hey, I don't know if you know this about the French 75 but you should look into it. And so I started researching the French 75 deeper and found some interesting things. So if you like better drinks, let's do some research. Okay guys, we're gonna talk about researching a cocktail and finding the provenance of an original cocktail recipe, the very first recipes made of a drink you may like. And in this case, we're gonna go through the French 75 and some of the research that we did in order to find its history. Now, the first thing I would say is I am not an originalist. An originalist by definition is someone who always wants to make cocktail as it was first invented. I don't go along with that concept. I think that thoughts and ideas and the concepts of cocktails change over time. Time. I think our tastes as a society change over time and I think the taste inside even a single bar can change over time if it's around long enough. So I don't think we should always make the cocktail the same way. I think we should listen to the guests who order it. I also think that if you go back and actually research cocktails, a lot of people will maintain that they have the original recipe and then someone else will find an original, more original recipe that happened before it. And that person's always stuck using the exact same recipe that someone had in 1860 or 1880 or 1900. And that recipe just may not taste that good. But if you don't go back and actually do the provenance, you don't actually do the research, when you're making the drink, you won't understand where it came from. You won't understand why it was developed. You won't understand the history behind it and then you won't appreciate the cocktail for for what it is truly and you also won't be able to give that provenance to your guests who may be interested in it which i think is what makes conversation at a bar really interesting between bartenders and guests. So I don't wanna get you confused. When I talk about original cocktails in this video, I'm not talking about original cocktails like creative cocktails, like in the 10 reasons original menu cocktails fail video that I put out a couple weeks ago. I'm talking about the original actual recipe or the very early recipes of the drink that we're talking about, in this case, the French 75. But yes, let's start on French 75 and what it takes to get a little idea of the history of the French 75, where it came from, how it was made, how it was served uh, throughout time. I have to give a little shout out to my friend Tess, who on Facebook said, hey man, I worked for a gin company for a while and I really did a lot of research on this. And just so you know, the French 75, the original, was served down on uh, crack dice and you may want to check that out because I like it better that way. And I said, oh, that's awesome. I didn't even know that. How did I not know that? For the video I did, I had gone into the Wikipedia page and I knew a little bit about the 75's history. And the uh, Wikipedia page kind of filled in my gaps. And I, I say in the video, uh, the first places where the 75 was printed, I say that uh, Harry Craddock in the Savoy Cocktail Book ends up printing it in the uh, variation that we use in this video. And I moved on and I made the cocktail up in a glass like this without any ice except for the shaking. Probably should have done a little more research on the topic just to introduce the various ways in which the cocktail can be served and it would be totally historically accurate. I also need to give a shout out to a new friend that I met because of this research. His name is Doug Ford. Doug Ford has a cocktail website called cold-glass.com. Don't forget the dash. That website has a lot of cocktail history and provenance on it and I happened to come across it because he had a really good article on the French set. I emailed Doug and we went back and forth and he had a lot of great stuff to add to this video. I will link cold glass in the description below and thank you Doug for all your help. All right, so the first step in researching any cocktail is to just go to Wikipedia. Is Wikipedia always right? No, as you'll see, it can be confusing or it's not clear. However, what it will do is get you on the path to reaching people like Doug Ford who can help you out. He is cited on Wikipedia as a secondary source for the French 75. First thing you need to know is that Harry's ABC of mixing cocktails comes from multiple places. Even though it's the first book that mentions the 75 cocktail, it also was only in Harry of Ciro's ABC of mixing cocktails. It's the same author, it's Harry McElhone. The problem is that Harry uh, worked at a bar called Ciro's in 1922, and then moved shortly thereafter to his own bar, Harry's New York Bar in Paris, which then of course produced the same cocktail book. That cocktail book does not include the French 
75. But the Harry of Ciro's ABC of mixing cocktails does. So that's the first thing you want to know about provenance in the Wikipedia is that it does not say Harry of Ciro's, which can be confusing. The next thing is how Harry made the drink. Turns out Harry was making the drink with grenadine, uh, a little bit of absinthe, gin, and he stirs it up and there's no mention of champagne whatsoever. So Calvados, gin, grenadine, absinthe, no mention of champagne. He presents it up. Robert Vermeer, uh, in his book, Cocktails and How to Mix Them, on page 44, says the 75 cocktail directions are fill the shaker half full of broken ice and add two dashes of grenadine, lemon juice, Calvados, and dry gin. Shake well and strain into a cocktail glass. So interestingly, he's adding lemon juice. Still, there was no champagne, but he's straining it into a cocktail glass just as Harry did. We can only imagine looks closer to this than it does a rocks glass filled with any ice. Then we get to Judge Juniors. Here's how, which is where the recipe we're more closely affiliated with today comes about. Judge Junior's book comes out in 1927 and actually refers to it as the French 75. He continues to use the lemon juice, but instead of grenadine, he's using uh, powdered sugar, granulated sugar. He's using gin in the recipe. The first time we see it, he calls it Gordon's water. He also hilariously says this drink is really what won the war for the allies. I'm thinking it might also be what wrote them the Treaty of Versailles and caused World War II, but that's just my own uh, addition to this cocktail history. So again, we're building in this case, it seems to be on ice in a tall Collins type glass closer to something that looks like this than a cocktail glass that looks like this. So the drink is clearly taking a turn in recipe closer to what we're used to but in presentation kind of away from what we're used to, closer to the champagne cup in history. At that point, it also shows up in the Savoy cocktail book. Now, if you don't know anything about the Savoy, for a bar nerd like myself, this book is really like the Old Testament of the Bible for any bartender interested in learning the old ways, but in a way that bridges the past and the modern, but also his recipes aren't so old fashioned that they make no sense. This is a great book to get if you're a new bartender. It is our Bible. Things you should know about the Savoy. The Savoy is an English bar. It also is the first bar to employ a head bartender who was a woman, Ada Coleman, in the early 1900s. And Harry Craddock took the job over from her. And after he took the job over, he shortly thereafter wrote the book. In it, he has the French 75 as the French 75. And he makes it with gin, lemon juice, a powdered, a spoonful of powdered sugar. He pours into a tall glass containing cracked ice. And then he fills that up with champagne in which he says it hits with remarkable precision. And so the the question becomes, okay, well, how did we get from our version today where we put it in an up glass and not on ice uh, away from this version that was more like a champagne cup? And so I started looking at cocktail books throughout time and to see if even in movies it had been served differently. The first movie I looked at was Casablanca, famous five out of five stars from anyone who's ever watched it. It's a great movie. Many drinks are ordered in the movie, one of which is the French 75. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to see it actually made or presented, but we know that it was still a popular drink, popular enough that Hollywood was quoting it um, in Morocco in Casablanca. There were people drinking champagne drinks uh, all throughout the movie as well, so it makes some sense. Uh, this is a little cocktail book from 1944 called The Standard Cocktail Guide by Crosby Gage, but in it, Gage says that the French 75 is the juice of one lemon, one teaspoon, again, of fine granulated sugar, two ounces of dry gin. He adds Angostura bitters. It's the first mention of Angostura bitters in this cocktail that we've seen yet. He shakes it with cracked ice and then pours the whole tin into a highball glass, which would be a Collins glass, and then he fills it with champagne. So again, the, it seems that the presentation is keeping with the Savoy. In addition, as we move throughout time, uh, I, I, I leaned on Doug a little bit here. He searched some of his books. He found a 1954 version of Eddie Clark's King Cocktail in which he serves the French 75 down again in a stemmed goblet with ice. So again, we're seeing uh, the same recipe, but served on ice continually here. Uh, Dale de Grasse, 2002 and seminal craft of the cocktail book, says the French 75 is presented in an ice filled goblet. So the same way as King Cocktail mentioned it and as the Savoy mentioned it. You don't get a mention of the drink put into a flute, a champagne flute that I know of until Doug mentions that Robert Hess's 2008 The Essential Bartender's Guide does present it in a flute on ice. Esquire's Magazine's 2016 Drink Like a Man suggests that some prefer the French 75s served without the ice 
in which case you can make them in champagne flute. So it seems like somewhere in the early 2000s, people started thinking, well, if it's a champagne drink, why isn't it in a champagne flute? And restaurants and bars seem to make that change. I was starting to bartend at that time, and at no point did anyone present the drink as to possibly made in anything other than a champagne flute. Later on, I decided it shouldn't be served in a champagne flute because the flute isn't big enough. Uh, as I mentioned in the French 75 video, you really need more room for the bubbles to show off on the palate as opposed to being shown off in the glass like a champagne flute is supposed to do. That change seems to have been made. Um, in addition, my mentor's cocktail book regarding cocktails also uses the French 75 and puts it what seems like in a champagne glass as pictured. They also use the cognac version of the drink, uh, which uh, the Madrasen list we use as bartenders from New York, it uses the French 125 to denote a cognac version of the French 75. The French 75 is gin, the French 95 is bourbon. Georgette Madra Petrasky wrote that she preferred the cognac version, but she references Harry Craddock's gin version in the book, but clearly it's presented up and not on ice as Craddock would have done it. Just to back that up, I actually got Michael Madrison's book from Australia where he now runs a bar called The Everly. The book is called A Spot at the Bar and in it he has the French 75 when his recipe includes gin, lemon juice, sugar, champagne, lemon twist to garnish, shake briefly, strain into a chilled cocktail glass, which would be something like a coupe. And so at some point in the early 2000s when Sasha was running Milk and Honey and Michael Madrison was working for him, the drink moved to a champagne glass. It is great to know those variations. I think in the future, I will likely serve more champagne cocktails on ice. I think it's brilliant. I think it's uh, a good way to serve drinks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it really gets at how difficult it is to get at the provenance of cocktails and really nail down what a cocktail is all about and understanding where it comes from. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always, the better drinks. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Ben the Bar Guy videos and if you want to keep the videos coming, maybe hit me with a subscribe over there or click on one of these videos over here, all of which will keep this bar craft going into posterity. Till next time, Nux Beer Mug. Decorate.